What's up guys, today we're going over what possibly is the best build in the game, easily the best stream build, and this is absolutely crazy. A lot of people when stream first came out thought it was kind of underwhelming, but I think as people played with it more and more, found builds, it really is extremely good, and I think this is the best use of stream in the game, and results in one of the best builds, if not the best. So starting off with the build with our subclass, there's not going to be too much to mention. I use Healing Rift, then you can't really choose your melee, but the first choice we have to make is our grenade, and we're going to be using the Shackle Grenade, which is a thrown weapon of weighted strain matter that detonates on impact, suspending targets, and creating additional suspending sub-projectiles. But we're going to alter this grenade with our first aspect, where if we hold our grenade, it will consume it, and activate Weaver's Trance. Final blows while Weaver's Trance is active creates a suspending detonation. So how this works is instead of throwing our grenade, we will hold it to consume it. And now every single final blow, whether weapon, ability, whatever it is, will then create a suspending burst around the target that died. And this will just be happening all the time in the build. And before you know it, everything in the game will just be suspended left and right. And you might not even know how it's happening. It is pretty crazy how this build all comes together. The second aspect on Warlock is the one when we put down our Rift. We will spawn in three thread lanes and also deploy any perch ones we have. So the way this works is kind of like just an instant burst of damage for majors. That's the way I use it. Putting down your rift will create three and send out any of the ones you have perched, which means you could technically send out up to eight at a time due to the way the thread lanes work on Warlock, where the thread lanes will go out and seek targets. If they can't, they'll come back and perch on you, and you can perch up to five at a time. So what you could do is technically have five perched already, put down your rift, and it will instantly send out the five plus create three more. So you would just have eight of them all at once, which is pretty cool. And with the first fragment of the build right here, thread of evolution, thread lanes travel further and deal additional damage. So look at that first without this fragment on. The hit for this 14,000 number. Now with the fragment on, it will go up to this 19,000 number, which will be a 33% increase, which is a good chunk. With how many will be spawning in this build, that's going to be a really, really good fragment. The next fragment is Thread of Generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. And for every single point of damage you do, it might not be like a huge chunk, but over the long run of everything going on in this build, it definitely adds up very quickly and will help you get your grenade back very quick and be really important for harder content in the game where it might be a little bit harder to get final blows. We also have Thread of Mine where defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. And with the way the grenade and our aspect works where every single final blow will suspend targets nearby, It'll be really easy to feed into our rift, which just equals more threadlings with the aspect. So even without mods or anything like that, you can kind of see where this build is going, where you can consume your grenade to make everything suspend. Then all these suspend kills will feed into your rift, and it's going to be a pretty infinite loop, even without mods going on. So already this build is coming together pretty well, where everything will be suspended, and you'll be creating all kinds of threadlings with your rifts. And moving on to the final fragment, arguably the most important thread of warding, picking up an orb of power grants woven mill. And the way woven mill works is I've heard from multiple sources that it's gonna be a 50% damage reduction, which is absolutely crazy, and it does stack with other things in the game. So if you have tier 10 resilience, that's gonna be a 30% damage reduction. Then the woven mill is 50, and the way these stack, it'll be a net of 65% damage reduction. So you're only gonna be taking 35% of the damage you should, which is a huge reduction of damage and makes it very hard to die. Obviously, you still can, but with this going on, I mean, you just take almost no damage. And whenever you pick up an orb, you get it for 10 seconds. And with this build, there's gonna be orbs all over the place, so you'll have that up at all times. Now, moving on to the weapons. The most important thing is to have a strain weapon with hatchling, and there's going to be a few you can choose from. The first one I prefer the most is the SMG. You can also use the hand cannon along with the machine gun in your heavy slot. I think the machine gun is going to be best for harder content, for example, Nightfalls, where you're 15 to 25 light under. 
And there's two reasons for having one of these strain weapons with hatchling. One, on every precision final blow, that's just another hatchling being spawned in. With everything going on in the build, that's going to be extremely strong. But also the three artifact mods this season on Tangler, the strain of Tangle with strain weapons will suspend things, along with the threaded blast, which will increase the radius and damage of the Tangle explosions, along with allied unraveling. Rapid final blows with strain weapons will give you unraveling rounds. And Unraveling Rounds are extremely strong. They're basically the strand version of Volatile. And when we shoot the Tangle, it will absolutely be like OG War My Cell's level of destruction, along with the added effect of suspending things that do live. Which leads me to our exotic armor piece, the Swarmers. Destroying a Tangle spawns a Threadling. Your Threadlings unravel targets that they deal damage to. So not only will all that stuff happen when we destroy the Tangle that we just showed off, we will also spawn in a Threadling and all the Threadlings will unravel targets, which just means everything in the game will be unraveled at all times. Now moving on to the mods on our helmet, I have Strain Siphon to create orbs with our Strain Weapon Final Blows. I have Powerful Friends and Heavy Ammo Finder. I did try using Ashes to Assets and it did not seem to work with the Suspending Grenade when you eat it, which is weird because on your Gauntlets, the most important mod is going to be Firepower, which does actually work with the shackle grenade being consumed. So if I take off the strand siphon, and the only thing on my entire build to create orbs is firepower, as you see, if I consume my grenade, whenever I kill a target and the suspending effect happens, if it gets a final blow, it definitely spawns in a orb. So it is counting as a grenade final blow. So Ashes assets might work, but from my experience testing it a lot of times, I did not ever see a noticeable difference. On my gauntlets, I also have strain loader, which is really important for the two strain primaries because neither one of them have a good left column perk. So that is pretty good. And along with the reserve perks right now, the loaders are broken where once you spawn in, you have to swap off the armor piece and back on for them to actually work, which is pretty annoying. On our Gauntlets, the final mod will be Grenade Kickstart to get a chunk of our grain back when we throw it. Then we have a Reserve Perk on, generally matching your power weapon. Whatever resist you want, then one charged up to be able to carry up to four armor charges at once. Then on our boots, we have two different mods to give us energy back when we pick up orbs, which will be Absolution, a chunk of all of our abilities, Innervation, an extra chunk of our grenade, and stacks on stacks, that way every time we pick up an orb, we get two armor charges. Then finally, on our bond, we have utility kickstart to get a chunk back of our rip back when we use it. Along with distribution, get a chunk of all of our booties back when we use our rift. And bomber for extra chunk of our grenade. So overall, the way this build works is you simply just consume your grenade. And then after that, every final blow will suspend targets. Feeding into our Rift energy, putting on our Rift will spawn in Threadlings. The Threadlings will do massive damage and unravel targets. As we're doing all this and getting final blows with our Strand Weapon of Choice, we'll be creating even more Threadlings, which once again will unravel more targets. We will get unraveled rounds to our Strand Weapon. Once again, more ways to unravel targets. And before you know it, you'll just be shooting one enemy. Everything nearby will be suspended. Then they'll instantly die from your Threadlings and unraveling rounds. And... It's just like this huge chain reaction just from a single final blow. And finishing off the weapons for this build, I prefer to use a special weapon that is really good for bursting down majors, preferably one with auto loading or envious assassin. That way you don't actually have to ever reload the weapon. So you can just pull it out for majors and things like that and it's always ready to go. Then you can really use whatever heavy you want. I've been using the two-tailed fox because I plan on making a video soon. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a feel for it but I've also been using the Winter Bite when it wasn't disabled, or you can always just use a G-Horn or a Rocket or whatever it is. Another good weapon loadout for hard content is swapping over to the Strain Machine Gun and now using Izanagi's Burden. And we were running this build in the Legend Nightfalls while 20 under, and it really allowed this build to continue to strive even in hard content. And with a machine gun, you don't have to like spray and go through all of your ammo. Really, you just need to get a final blow here and there and let the build do most of the work. And it worked really well in the Nightfall. Alex was using it and he was out killing me on a Solar Warlock while also doing a lot of damage to the champions with all the Threadlings. So overall, this build definitely strives even in the hard content in the game. And further helping it in things with champions, the suspending will be unstoppable. 
and the unravel is anti-barrier so just with this build alone you already have two of the three covered then if you need to you just throw in a weapon to cover the overall champions and final thing to note about the build is the super itself which is really strong now with the thread of evolution and that's because when you use the super first it'll send out a bunch of strand needles then once the needles hit the ground it'll create six threadlings so looking at damage on carl when you use the super there's gonna be seven needles that do damage and they hit four this 44,000 number then after that there'll be six threadlings so the total damage should be 478,000, which is quite a lot from a burst damage super i'm not sure how that stacks up to some other things in the game maybe a video down the road on that but that is obviously extremely strong Right now on screen, there will be a run through of all the different things I'm using in the build. Take screenshots if you need. But yeah, overall, this build is absolutely crazy. Definitely one of the best builds in the game, if not the best. And one of the most fun at the same time. Definitely try it out if you're not liking strain that much. And the way this entire build just comes together is so nice. And it just works out so well. Anyways, let me know what you think about this build down below. The rest of the video will just be some gameplay of the playlist Battleground. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. Just...